I'm here at a house to perform a wood destroying insect inspection, termite inspection. Um, common stuff we need, flashlight. Uh, we use Coast stuff, Coast is all rechargeable now. Um, so we really like the Coast stuff. We can plug it into our USB chargers and just charge everything. We don't have to worry about batteries or any of that. Um, I always wear gloves just because Sometimes going through houses and touching doorknobs and doing, you know, opening doors, you get down in a crawl space or like a, you know, basement or something, you're moving some things, um, keeps your hands clean. But then, uh, yep, and then my poker, my poker. So, um, very simple. They make extendable ones. I use, I use a 14 inch, just three eighths flathead, you know, allows me to scrape or look at things. Uh, on wood when I'm doing the inspections uh, to check, confirm, shelter tubes, scrape away at things. Um, and it also is an excellent cobweb fighter. And so uh, to keep the cobwebs out of your face. And since I have no hair, it just, you feel it all over. But uh, yeah, rainy. So just gonna walk through, do a termite inspection. Um, I may share some of that as I go through as well. First things I get out of my truck, you know, I'm just kind of gauging the house, looking at it. Uh, front door entry stoop. You can see there's drill marks. So there's another one there. Um, another one over there. And so right away I know that this place has been treated for termites before. So now the question becomes, okay, where am I gonna find anything if I do? And then standard drill holes, outer stoop or the outer Garage kick out. There's again. And again. So, you know, my radar is already up. Looking at these, noticing these right away. I always like to look at them. Um, and so now it becomes kind of a, okay, what do I see? What do I not see? It's been treated. So, let's we'll see what we can find. Come in the garage door. And again, we're just looking to see if those, those drill holes on the outside there they remain consistent, which there they are. There's one. And uh, they go along through here, They're pretty consistent. And the spacing on these right there, and then you can see the next one is there and there. It's about 18 inches. So that tells me a couple things. It tells me uh, we weren't able to drill every 18 inches for termite treatments until really around 2010, 2008 to 2010. So that tells me that it's been treated somewhat within the last probably 10 to 12 years. Uh, and it also tells me it's been treated with the newer products. So um, belly crawl. So I'll go out, I'll grab a crawl suit, I'll grab knee pads. But uh, yeah, so I'm already seeing, you know, it, it appears as though it was treated thoroughly. Uh, you can see them again there, there, there. Um, so it was treated thoroughly all the way through consistently which is good. So um, that's what you want to see when you do these. So if I do find any evidence or shelter tubes, then hopefully uh, it's not active or the best case scenario is any shelter tubes that were there have been scraped away, which is standard protocol for us when we treat. That way, when the next guy comes along in five, 10, 15, 20 years, and those shelter tubes are still scraped away, that would indicate that, you know, hey, uh, this is still inactive. The treatment actually took care of the job. Um, and that's just a way of letting other technicians know, you know, that, yeah, we treated this at one point. The shelter tubes are scraped away. They haven't been rebuilt. So that would help indicate that it's not active. All right. Just completed the inside the house inspection. Didn't see anything up there. So I uh, have all my crawl space stuff left or ready to go. So we got Tyvek suit, crawl suit, good flashlight, respirator. You do not want to be tasting or smelling crawl space all day. Knee pads, especially me, uh, somebody that has bad knees. I wear knee pads now. Uh, it makes a tremendous difference, especially for the longevity. When you do hundreds of these a year, um, it really helps. So right, let's go see what we can down inside the crawl. First thing I noticed is a little bit of mud. Uh, I don't believe those are shelter tubes. I think it's just kind of runoff into the crawl. You have insulation foam board, which is this, uh, which is, it'll be, it, it'll be glued or and or nailed to the crawl wall as you go through. And then there's insulation up here. So that makes it a lot harder 
for me to see, you know, and so I'll pull out some of that insulation as I go along, try and look, especially if I see anything suspicious. Uh, the other thing I always do when I get in a crawl space is I check for any reflective eyes. Uh, you do not want to be in a crawl space with some sort of critter, and your only defense is my, uh, my probe, my poker tool. So, yeah, uh, so we'll go through here, we'll see if we can find anything, and, uh, yeah, all right. I have uh, worked my way down. Here, I'll turn my light off. You can see the entrance to the crawl. It's over there through the pylons. So one important thing to check is always check these pylons on each and every side. So we always check them. I, I go through the one way, then I turn and I look. So I go through the other way and I'll continue following this all the way around. So I've come up all that side. Didn't find anything over there. It's just mud on the corner over there. And then anytime. Now, so you've got some insulation pulled down here, and so when you start to see, you know, some of this water damage type wood right here, I'm trying to get it so you can, uh, so you can see that pretty plainly. I like the probe, uh, you know, have moisture meters and such too. I typically don't use them because I can, I can literally tell that that was wet at some point, but it's by a vent, so, uh, but it's probe, you know, it's not going right through, um, so yeah, we'll just keep going through. So uh, not going through, meaning it's pretty solid. So, you know, uh, not finding any evidence there. So we'll just keep going through and get this finished up. All right. Uh, last time I filmed, I was clear over there underneath that sewage pipe or drainage pipe. I've come along this entire wall. I haven't found any evidence and I'm clearing this back corner and the exit is, can you see, over there over there so I'll have to crawl under that little hole that was about 12 14 inches I'll belly crawl under there scoop my way out um I haven't found any evidence uh but you know the the problem with foam board insulation is I can't see behind it so I always like to say I can't see what I can't see so all of this foam board insulation and then coupled with you know, stuffed in insulation up here on the sill. I can move this and look, and I have been as I've going as I've gone through. Um, but it's just, you know, I can't see what I can't see. So, um, yeah. But so far, I haven't found anything. So, it's really hard to tell what was found. Um, you know, but it, it is important to know that okay, it was treated, but and you used to have to note that on the form, but you don't have to anymore. So. I'm gonna finish up, work my way out, and if I don't find anything, I'm not going to recommend treatment. Uh, I couldn't find any old damage or anything new as of yet, so who knows? All right, so I'm all done. Coming out, see that right there, and you trace that along, another up there. As I'm coming out, I saw this as I was getting in, um, but this is the point of when you go through to always do a, you know, complete circular inspection. So you're getting all your viewing angles as you go through, um, and coming out, uh, the activities right here, you can see, looks like maybe they had some wood or something, some wood framing, maybe to pour this form right here. Uh, but this, this here is, uh, let me turn my light off here. That's textbook termite. You can see right where the concrete was poured against the block you can see where they've come in you see the shelter tubes and then uh there and you can see all of that you can see all of that right there the same down here so uh that was it i'm guessing there was some wood there like i said to keep that mold there um, yeah, so that's the only evidence I found. Uh, obviously nothing's active. Uh, it's been scraped away, has not been rebuilt. So I'll finish on the exterior. All right, uh, doing my walk around on the exterior, uh, brick fascia, as you can see. Um, so we've got landscaping and debris pushed up against it. So we're not really gonna be able to see much there unless it's really, really obvious. Um, see stone up against it. Uh, this is the back side of the garage. And so, um, as you can see, there's a drill hole, and then there's another one right there. 
right there. One that's broken off right there. Actually, it's right there. It's not that. That's just something else. Right there. And then uh, 18 inches would have got you to the soil. So um, definitely looks like they maintain a good treatment around the exterior. So I'll get this finished up. Just finished up uh, that termite inspection, wood destroying insect inspection. Uh, walked around the outside, brick fascia along the entire exterior, so didn't really see much um, outside of those drill holes that are consistent with a, a thorough termite treatment previously done. So um, yeah, that's, that's kind of a walkthrough uh, as far as what it takes to do a wood destroying insect inspection. A lot of it is experience, knowing what to look for, you know, getting in a crawl space. I got over the crawl space stuff years ago. Um, you know, I'm not claustrophobic at all. And you just get down there, crawl through, and you see what you see. So, um, but yeah, I, I think that's something that not many people do. You know, uh, very few homeowners ever go in their crawl space, uh, let alone, I, I don't think a lot of people have that much insight into what an actual wood destroying insect inspection is. Um, you know, with a home like this, it, it's, you know, you crawl through, you see what you can see. You can't see what you can't see. Uh, if it was a finished basement, it's kind of similar to what the foam board was down there. A finished basement's gonna have drywall. It's gonna have, obviously it's going to be finished. So you can't see the studs. You can't see the foundation. You can't see the sill plate. And so most of the time when termite activity or anything gets found, it's on a home sale transaction. An inspector comes in, looks, because Again, homeowners are not going in their crawl space to look for things, nor would they really even know what to look for. Um, and and so that's why these things get done during uh, home transactions, home sale transactions. And there's a lot of people that opt out of them, you know, and, and you know, I, I know some people do inspections for free, some do them for 50 bucks, some do them for 200, 300. It really just depends where you're at in your area. Uh, but to, to skip out on a wood destroying insect inspection where you're paying say $200,000 for a house. I think the average house is like 225,000 in America or something. And you're going to skip out on $200, uh, a 10th of a percent of, of your purchase price where you could potentially find, you know, the average cost to do a termite treatments anywhere from gosh, you know, 600 bucks to three, four grand on average, just depending on the size of the house, severity, et cetera. So um, yeah, I, I think it's important, you know, to get some education out there to understand that it's not a scam. Um, it really is, you know, you're trying to protect that largest investment of your life. And so hopefully this was helpful to some people and uh, ask me any questions if you like. I do a bunch of these a year. I literally do a couple hundred a year. So um, been doing them for a long time. I've had my, my termite, my wood destroying license for a long time, about a decade now, I think. So uh, thanks again. Be sure and ask some questions if you have them.